It's that time again. It's time for another Saturday Night Special where we talk about everything rock hounding related. Well, it's 2021. <laughs> and, uh, you know, 2020 was a mostly good year for rock hounding. Granted, you know, we saw the, the rise of fake rock hounding and we saw, well, clickbait <laughs> becoming quite prolific on YouTube. Both uh, are things that I find to be a little detestable, uh, but there's way more good in the world of rock hounding in 2020 than maybe you even realize. You know, we saw a lot of new people get into the hobby, which is great because, you know, without people joining uh, the world of rock hounding, I mean, what's the future look like for that? I mean, it's going to kind of start to fade away. And there's certainly been periods of time uh, where in all regards it was fading away, is fading away. Uh, so it's nice to see kind of this resurgence of people coming into it. It's uh, it's it's excellent, excellent to see. Um, and, you know, also we started to see a lot of the kind of more uh, bad advice, myths kind of being laid to rest a little bit and uh, things, you know, kind of, going more in a positive, good direction, which is nice. And I like to think that this channel here was, you know, played a small, small part in, in that. So, uh, on to the next year, right? So I have a couple of new things to show you, share with you. This is a book that has mostly flown under my radar. Now, <clears throat> it's a rock hounding location book. Uh, the Earth Treasures series of books isn't really something that I've seen talked about anywhere. Now, they are, of course, an older book, and they are a little less uh, user-friendly than the more modern ones, like the Gem Trails, stuff like that that you're just going to buy on Amazon. But, but here's the important part. A lot of the more state-specific guidebooks do not really exist for all of the states. However... They have a volume for each section of America. Now, there wasn't really any spots in Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana for me, because, you know, I'm right up there, Northeast Washington. There wasn't anything really in this that's new for me, but it's still interesting to read. Um, I like it. They said it was $17, but I got this on eBay for $5.95, uh, with free shipping. So totally worth it. It's a good addition to the Rock Library. It's uh, certainly, yeah, it's just, you know, it, okay, pet peeve of mine. <laughs> it is divided up state by state and then by county. Now, I don't know, like, about y'all, but I have a heck of a time remembering all of the names of all the different counties in my state, let alone all the other states. So not my favorite way of organizing a book, but uh, maybe I'll just have to get better at at remembering all of my county names, which there's, man, the, dang, there's a lot of counties. Also, I got an interesting question on the channel. Somebody said, why are agates so special? They asked me that. I'm like, that is an incredibly tough one. I don't exactly know how to answer it. I mean, there is a lot of variety in the world of agates, right? And here's a Botswana agate. There's a lot of variety in, in agates. So that that's, could be part of it, but there's a lot of variety in other things as well, not just agates. So you can't say it's because of the variety. And there's minerals that are more rare, so it's not a rarity thing. Um, I, I kind of didn't really know how to respond other than color and variety, I guess. I mean, I never really, I guess, gave it much thought. So, um, you know, if you have a idea or a, or a good answer for that, I am all ears. But why do people love these things? as much as they do. Oh, by the way, uh, that's a Graveyard Point agate. And uh, this one is from 
National Forest down by the Columbia River, uh, Guilford Pinch, Pinot, Pinchot, <laughs> and uh, the years of the moss I get from Utah. Now, um, speaking of, oh, we got, we got a couple more over here, right? How about that? How about that I get right there? All polished up and pretty. Focus. There we go. Polished up and pretty. Camera's hating me tonight. So, um, yeah, why, if it's not a rarity thing, it's not a variety thing per se, uh, yeah, why? Why Why do people get so into these? Um, I mean, by comparison, we have something here that's very rare. That <laughs> is all the gold I've ever found. Right there. Uh, I, would, I would like to find more, but, you know, gold is not... Uh, it's not the easiest thing to find. If it was easy, everybody would have it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I just... It was kind of an interesting thing to ponder, I guess, more than anything else. There is... Uh, hmm. Also, I have a new... I have a new tool. Let's scoot this over a little bit. I have a new tool. Okay. So we've all kind of, not, this isn't it, but we've all seen your standard rock hammer. And this is something we're going to be talking about as part of the January series of videos, getting into tools. But you have your standard rock hammer, S-Wing rock hammer. You can even have a knockoff one. It doesn't, doesn't really, uh, doesn't really matter a whole lot. Well, here is S-Wing Rockhammer 2.0. Now, a couple of things um, about it. It is, let's see how I can show you this here. It's a little bit longer, right? So that's lined up with the, the bottom, bottom of the handles here. So it's a little bit longer, but for the most part, the head is about the same. The strike face, so this is what interests me the most, okay? Um, I know I normally carry this, right? Which is a little, little chisel. Um, so for hitting, you get a little bit bigger strike face. And, uh, really that's kind of the main difference other than we have this yellow capped plastic and wall painted head. And I'm going to get that paint off there because the la I, I don't like that. Cause you know, you, this is not meant to be a, a rock chisel. This is meant to pry and, the paint's going to come off, and it's going to come off on the rocks that I'm trying to get and pry at. So uh, I'm going to get that off. But gen as a general rule of thumb, right, when a manufacturer of a tool paints their tool, it's because their tool looks like garbage under the paint, and they're using paint to hide the flaws of the manufacturing. So we'll see. But um, I have that new... New toy, so so shiny, at least for right now. But um, yeah, I I think that's gonna that's gonna kind of wrap it up a little bit. Um, I don't have a whole lot else to talk about here, other than uh, some pondering about agates. We got this new book over here, got this new hammer, and uh, yeah, I think we're gonna call it a wrap, everybody. I hope you have a great New Year's. We'll be catching you on the next one. I think uh, we got some fun stuff planned for the coming couple of weeks. Should be pretty good. We got a little mission planned, <laughs> which uh, will be, I can guarantee you, it will be on like anything that you have ever seen before. So with that said, have a good night, everyone.